What's up guys, Brian here, Man in the Barn. So last night I stayed within a few hundred yards of my search area. This is my third trip to this particular area and um, I'm not coming back without a for sure place that I'm going to look. The first time I came I had an exact destination that I wanted to go to. I went there, I didn't find it. Uh, the second time I came I had a even more exact it's different but exact i know exactly where i was going didn't find it so i left this trip i said i'm going to come out here uh, the first two trips i never did any recon around the area um both times i had an issue with my phone um that i lost battery the battery died while i was out here so i was not able to ca capture the video and uh, pictures that i wanted so uh, this time I said, I'm going to go, I'm going to camp out there, I'm going to uh, make sure that I'm prepared so I don't have the cell phone issues with the battery. And um, yesterday I went and I looked at both of the locations I had previously gone before. Um, I went to both of them, re-looked at them again, uh, took more pictures and videos of the area. Um, they're, I can't find nothing I'm missing. So. Today, I am going to, uh, this is my last ditch try, I'm going to go to uh, Heavy Loads and Water High. Um, a different Heavy Loads and Water High and see if I can find the blaze. So, um, it's going to require me to basically walk upriver um, because the I went as far as I could go yesterday. The sides of the canyon, there, there is no more trail. There is, I mean, there's a cliff that goes off into the river. So, um, if you remember in Lewis and Clark, uh, Forrest talks about when he and Donnie, looking for Lewis and Clark, when Forrest talks about he and Donnie going to, uh, riding their horses, I believe, and then the next thing you know, there was no steep canyons on both sides. So, I'm, I'm wondering if uh, that was kind of a, innuendo into this so um it's 7 30 in the morning uh, as i said i just woke up um i've got my my hammock here that i used to took a nap in yesterday afternoon i got my one man that i uh, got me through this is the first time uh, last night was the first time that i have ever dispersed camping by myself so uh, there's only been one other time that I went camping by myself, and that was at a campground with a bear box and a, a picnic table, and your park, your car was, you know, 10 feet away. Um, I've done that camping before by myself and with other people, and I've done dispersed camping, uh, backpacking dispersed camping uh, prior to uh, with some friends. However, never have I done dispersed camping by myself. And if you've ever done, for those of you who've done dispersed camping, backpacking, you have to bring in everything. And normally there aren't campfires allowed um, unless you hike in a uh, fire pan. And then even sometimes those aren't allowed. So uh, dispersed camp, there's really no fireplace. Uh, you have to I cook everything with my jet boil, um, water. I've got my carry a two three liter water bladders with me I'm just going to go over some of the stuff um, I did bring an extra can of fuel this time for my jet boil uh, just because I think I'm getting ready to run out of my first can normally I don't I'll bring a larger can if I'm going on a multi-day um, ha ha This is my water purification system. I'm getting ready to have to fill up my bladder. So this is probably the most important thing I have. There's the pipes and stuff in there, but um, 
this is probably the most important thing I have in the bag. All right. So without this, you're bringing in water. And you know water's heavy. Uh, <clears throat> so it's like four pounds a gallon. So um, having this with you is really, it's almost essential. Uh, other than that, I mean, I've got a, one change of clothes. I got a couple of pairs of socks. I've got a first aid kit. I've got a whistle. Uh, I've got my GPS and my walking sticks. Um, normally, sometimes I bring the hammock. Sometimes I don't. Uh, it lays, weighs less than a pound, though. So, um, I'm trying to think. What else, guys, did I bring? I brought some. Okay. For those of you who go out in the woods... And you go to the store and you're looking in the section or for bug repellent and you see those cans of off bugs laugh at those cans of off you need ladies and gentlemen 100 repel 100 this is 98.11 percent 98.11 percent deet this is the only thing that's going to keep the bugs off of you in the outback so don't buy the cans don't even bother ladies and gentlemen i've never seen this in an aerosol i've only seen it in um bottles about this big it can be picked up at walmart i got this one at walmart yesterday actually on the way in um i actually have a bottle that's about twice three times as big that i bought at rei um so go with the 100 percent. don't even bother with the rest of the stuff uh, but this one You'll be amazed uh, at the way it works. Literally, it was like a halo of bugs. They were just circling around me, the flies yesterday. And if I see it again today, I'll try to take some video of it. They never landed on me. If you if they landed on me, I'd find a spot, rub it in. They would just like search a place to land. And there was really nowhere for them to go. I didn't put it in my hair. I, I have a hat, a hiking hat. And I don't spray it on my face. Uh, I spray it in my hands and then... You know put it on like first sergeant puts on his uh camo makeup but um yeah i'm trying to think um inside my one man i have my air pad uh i've got a, a air sleeping pad um i don't know if that's required or not but i tell you what it sure does help um if not i would have to bring a pad of some sort right to keep yourself off the ground um, and this compacts very, it was like 75 bucks. It's pretty expensive, but it compacts down into almost nothing. Weighs less than a foam pad. So, anyway, um, I just wanted to take a few minutes and uh, tell you about what's going on while I'm out here. I'm going to, oh, I forgot I caused it because I'm sitting on it. Um, this is my bear what does it call it bear vault bearvault.com um, there's two sizes these come I've seen them in two sizes this is the bigger one of the two there's a smaller one uh, if I had the smaller one I would have brought it on this trip that's probably the biggest pain in the ass for me to carry around guys um, it's big it's bulky there's weight to it but it's a requirement. I'm in Colorado. It's state law in Colorado if you're camping without um, dispersed camping, without some type of a, a bear box uh, that you have to have a you know, bear canister. Uh, some people still try to hang their food uh, up and they can get away with it. Uh, actually, two years ago when I went with my group, they hung their food. Um, I brought the bear vault. But the, uh, they're trying to get you away from that. Um, when I say they, it's the forest tree people. Uh, they really want you in bear vaults, um, at least in Colorado. So I, I, I do bring that in. It fits in my um, backpack. There's a spot for it. Kind of, I think my backpack has got a spot specifically made for this almost, it seems like. Um, but also, it's a stool for when you're out here. 100%, um, I'm a pretty big guy. Um, it holds my weight. I think it's like up to 400 pounds. 
Um, so I notice when I take it out with groups of people, somebody's always trying to sit on it. So uh, there's always that. Um, but yeah, that's the other piece I, I wanted to, to talk and show you. So there's one more piece of uh, gear that I brought on this trip that I didn't use. And that is my bah, sleeping bag. This is a 20 to 40 degree cool weather sleeping bag rated at 40 uh, degrees. Um, it's a small compact one. This is, I don't know, maybe a foot long. A um, little bit bigger than my jet boil. So, um, pretty compact for sleeping bags. Um, but as I said, I didn't use it on this trip. So, I probably could have saved the weight. But I wanted to show you that. That was one piece that I was actually in my, my tent, in my one man, um, in case I needed it last night. It's, I was going to turn into a blanket. But uh, here, let me, I want to show you now my, the inside of my tent. So I got this one at REI. It's a one man. I really like it. Um, it it's pretty compact. It, uh, it's very easy to put up. It only comes with two poles and five, um, Two poles and five st uh, stakes or spikes, whatever you want to call them. Um, inside, this is my uh, pad, and I got my pillow. That pillow compacts down. Uh, it's a foam in there, so it shrinks down to pretty small. So anyway, um, there's the pad I slept on, and uh, it works really well. I really like it. So. So, not much to it. I could bring out this if I wanted to. Um, this wing here, um, and I would if it was if there was a chance of rain. But yeah, and the air vent. It's got a little air vent that you can open from inside as well. There's my hammock. It's just an eco hammock. Uh, one man. They come in one one person and two person. Um, uh, t the one person is 200 pounds and the two person is 400 pounds. However, I'm more than 200 and it works with me just fine. So I don't want to say how much more, but enough more. So, yeah. This was my setup last night. And right out here are some paths. Some of you are going to say, Brian, that really looks like a campground you're at. There's a post there, and and I will say that it is a campground, but it is not a campground that I'm authorized to be staying at. And actually, there is nobody, probably within three miles of me. I'm telling you guys, this is Finny enough. I don't give a damn. It was absolutely stunning seeing here last night. Anyway, I'm going to uh, make me up some breakfast here and get ready to get uh, down the river and we'll see what happens. All right.
right. It's 12 o'clock Saturday. All packed up. Remember guys, leave no trace. So, on my way. Out of here. No luck this time.